We're about to get started learning about John Douglas, the mind hunter. If you want to learn about profiling people, how to read minds, how to understand people, how to spot a criminal, how to spot a liar, and how to protect yourself from people who can manipulate you, this is the video for you. It could help you in a life or death situation. Go ahead, like and subscribe, and let's get started. So welcome to the second part of this video. This is part two. We're talking about JD, John Douglas. If you haven't watched part one, go ahead and click on my YouTube channel and you can find part one. Part one gives you the introduction to who JD is and the masterclass and where this is getting really exciting. So if you wanna learn about how to be a mind hunter, how to be someone who can understand people, read people's minds almost, profile people, and save yourself from life or death situations, this is the video for you. The next episode here was identifying vulnerabilities. So identifying vulnerabilities was an interesting one because according to JD, everyone, and I mean everyone, has vulnerabilities. And vulnerabilities are another way JD used to find out people's behaviors. When JD usually starts to think about who the criminal may, uh, may be, he usually starts at the age of 25, and when thinking about the age, depending on the sophistication of the crime, he will either increase the age or reduce the age. JD always employs a tactic known as staging, and I liked this one because he tries to find a vulnerability, and then I'll give you an example. You can go to the show to, to learn more about this, but there was a criminal who used a rock to violently hurt someone, and I'm trying to be as PG as possible, but he took that rock because they had interviewed this person and he was all cocky and all uh, very certain about himself, answering questions, etc. So they couldn't pinpoint him, they couldn't nail him. So what JD did was he took a rock and that rock and put it somewhere in the room around 45 degrees angle and they invited the person, he had the light lit, um, the room dimmer, you know, and around nighttime when the crime happened, and they were like, why are you bringing in the rock? And he said, if there were 100 people in the room, the person who used that rock to commit harm will look at that rock, will identify with it, right? The, there's still a connection there. And that's pretty interesting. So they brought this guy in and man, he saw the rock and his entire demeanor changed. Couldn't get his eyes off the rock. He wasn't prepared for that. He was prepared to answer questions, but once he saw the rock, that's staging. It took him right back to that crime and JD didn't even ask him if he committed it or anything. He just started from the perspective of, I know you did this, but why? And that changed everything. The guy began to confess, the story goes on and on, etc. So if you like detective stories, criminal minds, uh, things like that for on TV, movies, books, this could be a pretty interesting episode for you. So JD recommends that be careful of people who may use your vulnerabilities to take advantage of you. Ask your friends and family to take an inventory for you. Ask them, what are my weaknesses? What do you think my weaknesses are? When you walk into your car with your phone, you're, you're not in tune with your environment. You don't know what's going on. And that's dangerous. Um, you make yourself vulnerable that way. He also claims that if you know your vulnerabilities, you can predict how you will respond if an information was brought up to you. Right? information about your vulnerability was brought up to you. Uh, as an investigator, you can use that to your advantage. And JD asks all of us to do a self-assessment. Now we move over from that to another episode titled Developing Your Intuition. Intuition is built in experience, education, and inner gut instinct. Intuition is not inherent bias. Those are different. Intuition is when we notice things and make a judgment without consciously noticing that we're making the judgment. Inherent bias is when we rely on superficial clues and cues and stereotypes to fill in the blanks. So they're two different things. I like the question that JD asked. He said, ever feel hairs on the back of your neck stand up? That's your intuition. And I, I, I guess he's right. He says that a way to develop your intuition is to listen carefully to others. 
People who contradict themselves or repeat themselves too much are usually lying. If people are always on the defensive, they're usually lying. And if you feel the need to get out of any situation, say you're having dinner with someone and you just feel the need to leave, do it. Don't hesitate. He talked about a friend of his who went on a date, a blind date, and the guy said something and she just felt the hairs on the back of her neck stand up. And she said she's going to the bathroom and left, only to find out that he was a murderer. Let's learn a few new things. MO. You've probably heard about someone having an MO. Modus operandi or operandi, however you want to pronounce it. According to JD, this is learned behavior. Then there's a difference. According to JD, don't expect to link cases by MOs alone because the subject can be learning from a previous mistake. Let's say a criminal breaks glasses when they break into houses. Uh, they could evolve. They could say, oh, well, you know, glasses make too much noise. Let's get tools to open the door instead. So that's their MO, but it's evolving. Signatures are different. I like this. I like this episode because you can easily apply it to yourself. Signatures are different. Signatures are hard to break. People have signature things that they do. And usually it's before they do something special, like, you know, bat or kick. You know, there are soccer players who do certain things before they kick the ball. It's almost ritualistic. And some of them feel like it's bad luck if they don't do those things. You might be someone like that. You may have, you may have a signature before you start your day, before you work out, before you eat your food. Uh, JD told some very interesting stories about how criminals use tactics to invoke empathy from people and gain their trust. You might want to watch the whole thing to hear the same stories that will make you a little more paranoid. So if you watch this whole, if you watch the whole thing, and I watched it late at night, which is probably not the best idea, it'll make you more paranoid, but it'll make you more alert. I can guarantee you that. You'll be more careful about your environment. And it's very easy after a long time of having peace and not having, not hearing negative stories around you to just get complacent and just feel like, oh, everything's okay, you know. I can walk to the car just looking at my phone. I can wear headphones wherever I go, even if it's late at night. I don't have to lock my doors. Be careful. All right, so it's easier to deal with people who have MOs because they are malleable. People who are not necessarily creative, they like things done, in, you know, set in stone and done a certain way, they usually have signatures. So if you're a creative person, you might want to work with someone who has an MO instead. Remember that MOs are learned behavior, they can be improved. A signature is a ritual that is unique to that individual. Great. Now, another episode, how not to be the victim or a victim of a violent crime. Number one, situational awareness. When you get to a place, try to think about a way to escape, especially if you're in a place that's quiet and unknown. So know your surroundings, know where the door is, etc. Another thing is that people need to be aware of their surroundings at nighttime specifically. It's also important to come up with a code system with your child. So for example, your children should know a code word. Let's call the code word mouse, right? Mouse or church. So that if a stranger shows up to them and asks and says something like, hey, dad told me to pick you up, even if it's someone they know, they can ask for the code. And if that person doesn't know the code, they need to run. They need to run. Another thing is fighting. He mentioned that fighting is important, especially in public. If you are about to be abducted or kidnapped, or whatever the case is, and you're in public, it gives you a fight. It gives you a fighting chance. It gives you the chance to escape if it's a, if it's possible. Don't just go quietly. If you're in public, usually people try not to disrupt public places. They don't try to harm people or shoot in public because they could get caught. So. If you have the opportunity to fight in public, you need to do it and then run if you are able to get away. And we're not hoping anything bad happens to anyone, but these are some of the lessons that we learned from this particular masterclass. As a cybersecurity specialist, there's something called the zero trust model. And I don't wanna to go too deep into it. Let me know if you wanna talk about my cybersecurity uh, career at some point. But in the zero trust model, you trust no one and you always verify. And you don't just verify, you verify explicitly, regardless of the identity. So we'll talk about, we can talk about that later. Finally, in the final class, JD said this, learn to profile yourself. Be honest with yourself, know your weaknesses. 
Are you too agreeable? Do you lack self-control? Do you have a fear of abandonment when relationships end? You don't want to be someone who can be easily manipulated or taken into a cult without even knowing it. Do you have trouble making everyday friends or making decisions? If your friends tell you that you have any of these traits, you should know that it raises your risk level when it comes to being manipulated or being taken advantage of. If you're going to meet someone, say someone new, meet them in a public place, daylight, maybe go with a friend. Many people using dating apps are susceptible to things like this. Here are some of the final words from JD in this class. Number one, be careful of the company that you keep. Trust your intuition, especially when something doesn't seem right. And, you know, I can speak from the Christian perspective that you should probably be a little bit more prayerful if you're a Christian, um, you know, listen to the voice of God or the Holy Spirit, because sometimes that gut instinct, that voice in your heart, that still small voice telling you, get out of here now, is what could save your life. JD also says uh, that the work he does is not what you see on television. It's not like the work in Hollywood. He said that it's stressful and that sometimes you work till you drop. It happened to him. He was, he, he had it up to here. He was working days, not just hours, days, not getting enough sleep, not meeting with his family, not balancing his life. And he got into a coma. He got into a coma and that almost took away his career. He actually went to his room, his hotel room, locked the door and felt this huge headache, uh, lower temporal lobe and fell on the floor, passed out and was there for days. They had to break the door down to get him. Basically, he's saying that some people want to become profilers because of what they see on TV, but it's not glamorous at all. He says that he was heavy on work, light on family, light on faith and light on socials. And something had to give, which is what happened to him. He, had, he went into a coma from working too much, too long. And according to JD, focus on your family, your faith, and your friends. Work will always be there. And so thank you, JD, for your insight and your willingness to share your wisdom. And I know that I condensed this. Go ahead and uh, watch the entire thing on Masterclass if you'd like. And comment below what you've learned, the biggest thing that spoke to you.